together. Rudy, the stage is yours, my friend. Take it away. What is up, Awesome Games Done Quick 2023? I am your boy, Rudy, and I will be your SMW Kaizo specialist <laughs> today. We are taking on some huge beasts today. This game is called Elephants and Snakes and Crocodiles, uh, and the creator's name is Morsel. I'm so lucky to be here. It's such a gift. It's a dream of mine to be here. I'm very lucky to be joined by my commentators. They are my best friends. Uh, they are DeWild Grim and White Moth. Hey, what's up? I'm uh, Grim here. Hello, uh, White Moth. How's it going? Now, this game requires a ton of focus and concentration, so I'm going to do my absolute best to focus when I have to focus, and they will jump into the water when it's warm. Uh, I, I'm almost ready to start. I just want to take a quick moment. Uh, I actually lost somebody very special to me to cancer-related issues last year. I want to dedicate my gameplay uh, and my run today to my 11-year-old blue-nosed pit bull, Chiquita, who I lost last November. Uh, I miss her so much. I want to dedicate this gameplay to her memory. I also want to dedicate my gameplay today to my number one fan, my biggest supporter. I would be homeless in the streets without her, my wife. And with that, I am ready to count down if you guys are ready in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, let's get it rocking and rolling. Uh, right away, you're going to notice that this is unlike other Kaizos in that uh, the first few stages are non-linear. You can do the first eight levels in any order. Uh, and that's in part to... This Kaizo was heavily inspired by Mega Man. Morsel drew a lot of inspiration for Mega Man. You're going to see it in the level design and some of the music. And so what Ruzi is doing here really is he's picked a nice chill level to start. There are some very tough stages in the first eight and even more so in the later half of the game. But it's just a nice little nice little trip through the water here. Yeah. First midway of the game. Let's go. Hi. Yeah, first stage. Nice job. Doing well so far. Yeah, Morsel said he tried to make each level a direct reference, like level to level to Mega Man 2. This one is based on the, the water stage. You know, the very high jumps. It's cool that like when it starts out, it's like dry land, and then as you go into the water, the physics actually change. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Doing some little precise weaving here. This is trickier than it looks. Into the it's pipe. no problem, though. It's absolutely no one. problem. Let's go. That's one out of 13 exits in the game. Kaizo, let's go. <laughs> oh, I love the energy. <laughs> What's up next? Bullies? The bully level? Also known as the elephants. Yeah, the bully monsters, the elephants. This level we're using a combination of ice physics and the bouncing of the bullies. Um, there's a lot of preservation of momentum here. A lot of neutraling of the D-pad actually makes you go faster here. It's cool that he actually added uh, a lot of the graphics from the original Mega Man into these games. Yeah, this is Flash Man. I love the way this stage looks. Yeah, you'll notice in this stage and the next stage, Morsel does a great job of making the levels feel alive. Very nice there. There you go. This is a cool little section you're going back and forth. Oh, gets to retry it there. Yeah, the part's a little merciful that if it doesn't go right immediately, you can try it again. Not the case for almost everything else in this game. There we go. Level two down. Two down. Let's go, gamers. Two out of 13. We might be gaming here today. Ooh! Certainly seems like it, doesn't it? All right, next up you're doing stones, right? Yeah. All right, twin stones. Twin stones. This level is interesting in that these throw blocks, uh, they can't interact with the water. If they touch the water, they break. And if they touch an enemy, 
they break. So you have to do a lot of movement to avoid hitting enemies, hitting water. And that's something that's interesting about this game is a lot of the levels will have just like this one pretty simple gimmick and there's just like a ton of cool things that Morsel's done with it. Very easy. It's an H. Very quick H. Second half makes uh, a lot of use of the fire flower power up to break these little orbs. You'll see that a little bit later on in this game as well. We're going through the one tile gap. I don't think that was actually intended, but you don't always do things intended in Kaizo. All right, here he's making his way to the end. He's just got to clip this block up through the corner there because Mario's cool like that. Yeah, this ending's pretty tricky. Uh, you actually have to break that one precise orb or else you'll walk right off into the water at the end and have to do it all over again. Three down, we are absolutely flying. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't even believe it. This next level is actually called My Bakak. It's actually one of my favorites to play. Grim, if you want to go into the meaning of what that means, actually, it'd be kind of cool. Uh, well, when I looked it up, it just means my fellow. It means my fellow. Yep. A lot of the level names and things in this game are references to Shakespeare, I believe. Yeah, Morse is a big Shakespeare fan. I think it mentions that in the credits as well. I think this level is a lot of fun with the, the bullets, especially the vertical bullets you'll see a little bit later on. Yeah. I think those are really fun to bounce on. This level is pretty chaotic with the amount of projectiles in it. But it's fun to play. So we take an intentional right. death there. Yeah, because it makes this setup far more consistent and it's actually faster. If I had to choose out of the first eight, this is definitely like probably my favorite level to play. Uh, there's something super satisfying about jumping off of these vertical bullets. And this part in particular, right? This part feels yeah. so oh, yeah. cool. Love this it's hard part. to explain. All right, I think here he's going to stall in this middle one for a second, just because that bullet right there that he just jumped on is a little tricky sometimes, doesn't always want to come out immediately. And oh, a funny little chuck through. at the end. Okay, the next level will be moving very, very quickly. Uh, your first oh, time seeing this, it seems ridiculously fast, but it seems like the more you play it, the better you get at it. Uh, time seems to slow down, uh, enter the matrix, so to say. Yeah, these platforms, uh, when you jump off them, you like have the speed that the platform had when you come off of them. Yeah, that is a custom thing that Morsel put into the game. You can really chuck yourself on some of these. And then the second half, you were going to really see Rudy throw on himself. Very cool jump to the H. Morsel's actually used these platforms in other other games, like uh, Storks. There's a level in Storks with these as well. Even just outside of Morsel's work, I see these popping up here and there now. They're starting to get pretty popular. And here at the end, there is a sequence to hit these switches. The message box at the halfway point actually tells you what you're supposed to do there. It's morsel code. It leads you all the way to the ending. Very nice, Rudy. This is our first uh, vertical section in the game. It's called Air Braving Tower, but I think it might be called also Air Boat Tower, depending on how you think about it. Airboat height. Okay, it's fine. Making That's heavy fine. use of these uh, watermelons. Some people like to call them watermelons. Little pink triangles that you wall, wall run. You might notice when Mario is on the wall, uh, the pink spikes will disappear, making it possible to ascend. And this is... 
out of the first eight, I would say definitely one of the tougher stages to execute. A lot of really precise movements. And you can see on these parts here, he needs to delay a very specific amount so all this stuff lines up. That's very precise. Let's go! Right. Oh my oh, god! Nice. Yes! Okay. I didn't oh. want to say anything. I didn't want to mention it, but yeah, that, yeah. that midway jump, the last jump, is very, very tough. It is absolutely vicious. You will bonk your head like a hundred times before you get up there the first time. One of the super satisfying things about like speedrunning these Kaizos is, you know, it took me over 40 hours to complete this my first playthrough. Uh, and it's just so satisfying to be able to run it back and be like, wow, remember that? Yeah. And I've got it down to under 30 minutes. This part is, uh, it, lo it looks cool. It's, uh, <laughs> I always say if you die here, you have to stop running the game because I've never seen anybody die here who, who has been speedrunning it. So for such a brutal stage, for it to end that way, is it's pretty nice. He's through it. It's no problem. It's no problem, baby. Let's go. Not at all. All right, now only we a couple enter the levels forest. here. Yeah. You notice so in this stage that uh, the Wigglers are a lot faster than they typically are, and they also track Mario. And the bombs will explode as soon as they touch the ground. So you gotta carefully navigate your wiggler friend. Yeah, you're kind of escorting the the worm and he's escorting you at the same time. You gotta work together. Nice, you gotta make a little hole for yourself there. Beautiful. There's a funny little bomb there at the H that he likes to blow up very quickly. This part's Rudy really has interesting. An interesting strat here of dropping the dropping the shell. You don't really see a lot of people do that. I think he's the only person I see do that. Very very fun Grr. jump here. Okay, yes. This is this is like I would say of the first eight levels, this is like the jump. Yeah, infamous bean jump. Yeah. It's no Midway problem. and air braving tower is hard, but this one is this is my nightmare. If you touch these beans Oh man. If you even come close to these beans, they just grab onto you and they stop your spin. And you need to preserve your spin to get through the next part. I always thought this part, this little tunnel, I thought this was a lot of fun. This little chase sequence. Yeah, it's really unique. I think that's what I like most about this. Is that there's just so many little unique pieces of this game. You think we should do a donation real quick? Yeah, we could take a couple donations. That'd be pretty cool. Absolutely. We are still getting a lot of hype for Step Mania. We're over halfway there now. $55,000 out of that 100 that we need. Uh, also getting some love for Kaizo and Rudy. Uh, Super Ben sent in $100. Awesome to see a Morsel fan game at GDQ again. Crush it, Rudy. Uh, Dan Salvato coming in with $5,000. Here to express oh, my I know, right? Uh, here to express my love for the geniuses in the Super Mario World fan game community, players and developers alike. And thank you to GDQ for giving this incredible talent in game design the world stage that it deserves. You all reach new heights year after year, and I can't wait to see what the future has in store for one of my favorite gaming communities out there. Wow, that's super hype. Five thousand, let's go. That's huge. Yeah, thank you. I got more if you want them. Yeah, let's do a couple uh, more. Go for it, yeah. Uh, for all it. right. Uh, Meatloaf sends in $25. Good luck on your run, Rudy. We are absolutely gaming here today. Pizza Saucer sent in $50. Elephants, snakes, and crocodiles? 
I prefer to avoid two of those three. Which one do they not want to avoid? Rick and family sent in $50. I am mega hyped to see Rudy crush elephants, snakes, and crocodiles. No saving the animals today. Good luck, Rudy. You rock, man. Because rock man with the... It, you get it. You get it. I see what you did there. <laughs> Age of Stars with $250. What even is Mario? Okay, we me. made it past the bean. Mm -hmm. To me, Mario is a beacon of hope. There we go. This is uh, not the intended way to go through this last one. We're going to bop this last bomb, get him out of the way, so we can just hang out right on that platform. Normally, you'd have to go back and forth and dodge all the explosions. And we're back on track. It's like that actually never even happened. A positive mental attitude goes so long playing these games. It doesn't even matter. It's no problem. It's no Woo! problem. No problem. Rocking and rolling. We got one more in the first eight levels. Uh, this is one of the coolest levels, in my opinion. Very colorful, very fun. A lot of different ways to play it, depending on your strats. Great music, too. Yeah, this is the Fallenator, right? I love Tim Fallen. Yeah. <laughs> If you've seen other people play this, uh, pretty much everyone gets through this level in a little bit different way. Uh, the way that the, the plants get spawned onto the screen affect all the cycles for the rest of the level pretty much, so it's really interesting the way it all works. Yeah, we saved the best for last year. Eight, eight of eight here. Uh, it's probably my first or second favorite exit, to be honest. Very, very cool level. So, in, in addition to being inspired by Mega Man, uh, Morsel is also ins very inspired by a lot of non-Kaizo games out there, specifically the Hyper series, which I think, it feels like this is a direct reference to that. Yeah, just a little less janky. Uh, here, Rudy's going to wait just to get this plant to line up a little more safely. This level is just so much fun. Gives you a nice little indicator on the left there when these blocks are going to change, which is nice. And there you go. Yeah. All right. We're first eight. The hateful eight are done. If you want to think about it, we're about to go into the special world. Oh man, I'm feeling so good, you guys. Let's go! Hype! Oh. Okay. Get it, also dude. think of these as the Wily stages. Yeah. As if things had to get more difficult, they, they do. Yeah, these final stages, uh, they're very, very tough. And you'll see here, this is another... Uh, bit of Mega Man inspiration is the Mega Man items. Make a few appearances in these stages. Yeah, Rudy's actually using the the shoulder buttons on the Super Nintendo controller to spawn in these platforms. So you, as the player, get to choose when and where to place them. Yeah, thankfully Morsel has also placed these coins that are basically like, hey, put it kind of near here and that should work out. Starts fun, little staircase. Yep, right into the pipe. And that is the halfway point. See the introduction of the smashing terrain here. Uh, this section in particular is very like timing dependent. Um, very cycle heavy. So you really gotta get, make sure you know when it's gonna smash and when you can move. You can see him lining it up right here. Oof. Oof. 
that's a little oh. jump there. It's a little oh. tapper of a jump. All right, though, it's no problem. No, moving quickly. You want to do a? We, I guess we could do another donation. Yeah, why not? All right. Um, I did want to get this one in. It's a little more serious, but coming from the community, twenty-five dollars here from Doctor No. This one is for UGH Rochester. We love you and miss you. Love Roch. I've also got $100 here from IC Cubed. Big smiles for big gaming for big cancer awareness. Sending much love to Rudy, Grim, White Moth, and the GDQ staff who make this possible. Failboten sent in $100. Good luck, Rudy. Love seeing Kaizo at GDQ. $100 towards seeing more GDQ with Step Mania. And we are almost at $54,000 on that. Please keep the donations coming. Ernest with $25 donation. How is he talking and beating these levels? Very good. And one more. Uh, We're out of there. It was, it was no, problem. It no problem. No <laughs> problem. No problem. Got to focus for some of these jumps here. <laughs> now, this is a very, very challenging game. You might see a couple deaths here and there. They're kind of common, but... uh. I don't want to toot my shoot here, but my PB has three total deaths, so I just wanted to say that just to say that. This next level is really cool. It's called Auspicious Mistress. <laughs> this uh, is my favorite track in the game from Mad Stalker. Yeah, yeah, my favorite music in the game right here. Oh, you'll notice in this level, you can't jump, so you're basically just running around frantically on this platform. Uh, you're going to run off the platform sometimes to bounce off other things, and you just there's a whole lot of dodging. Very memory-heavy. There's a lot of memorization in this level. Yeah. I like to think of this as kind of like a Mario ballet. you got to learn the steps, learn your little movements. Mm -hmm. He's going to position himself right here to get through those. It's a nice little setup, because that part is very hard to do. And in there, wow, first try. We got the rising platforms making a return, and the baseball friends also making a return. We got Rudy moving up. Quick jumps, a little tricky. Tricky one right here at the end with this block toss, and he gets it. Nice. That's actually a lot harder than it looks. Ooh, Ooh. final baseball right at the door. Uh, that, actually, that has actually never happened before. Uh, that is truthfully <laughs> never happened before. It's all right, though. World's, World's first. first. World's first here at GDQ. I never really noticed before, but a lot of these baseball trucks seem to be boxed in. Like normally they would jump up and down, but it seems like they don't jump. I just realized that. That is kind of odd. These dudes at the start jump though. Yeah, I guess those guys do. The subble can be kind of weird sometimes for the balls. Like, they're not always consistent, and I think them being trapped in the walls has something to do with that, because when they go to jump, they do throw the balls slower than they would typically. Yeah, it kind of, like, puts a hiccup in their in their baseball throwing yeah. rhythm. Yeah. So you got to kind of react to some, some of these little situations you find yourself in. Yeah, it's not always exactly the same. That moon in the background is a little ominous. I I feel like the second half of this game is 
It's got a more sinister tone than the first half, for sure. First half, a lot of bright colors and flashing lights and stuff. Kind of tells a story. Can I get a couple donations in here or do you need focus? Yeah, you can do a couple donations. All right, cool. Because uh, we just had this one come in from the Yeti for $10,000. Yo, let's go. Hey, all. Yeti here. Now this is pod racing. Elephants and, <laughs> Elephants and snakes and crocodiles is an amazing run, and the music is incredible. Chat, pop up with your best dance mo dance emotes because we've raised $80,000 with the support of everyone who has ordered from our AGDQ 2023 collection. Be sure to grab your items before the event ends at theyeti.com. It's in there. Thank there you, Yeti, go. for that $10,000 donation. That's it what we needed. actually lifted up the gameplay. Let's go. Yeti magic. This next one uh, is going to switch it up a little bit. You might not s see this in a lot of Marios. Actually, there was a Game Boy Mario recently that showed a airship level, I guess. Are you talking about Super Mario Land? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. If you think about it, this cloud is kind of functioning like an airboat in, in kind of a way. Mm-hmm. So in this section, uh, you need to count your shots. There are times where if you fire one too many times, you will hit a switch. Because some of the switches are fireball activated, and you can actually lock yourself out. Yeah, so you like need that to know, one right there. Yeah. It would have made a wall he couldn't get through. Just got to move through these hammers. Nice. Easy. This is a fun one. This yeah, platform this follows you through the whole level. And you can swing it uh, depending on how long you stand on it. So you're totally in control of the positioning of this platform. I think this might be the coolest section in the game. I've never seen anything like... I don't know yeah. how to explain it. It's just really cool to look at. I would agree. The next level after this one is one of ultimate... Uh, Hype. It is called Ships Made Cities, and it's none like anything else out there. It is, it's a gauntlet in the truest sense. All right. Very good. Yes, this next level is four distinct sections, um, each with a boss at the end of each section. Um, you need to do the section plus the boss before you can get a midway. So it's uh, even with even if you see the screen change, it does. It's not over yet until he beats the boss. This first section, uh, he's got. You can see he's got this little bullet following him. It's gonna follow him the entire time. It's gonna antagonize him. Where he just needs to keep dodging him, keep moving forward. Especially oh interesting God. right here, yeah, where you have to do these loop-de-loops. Kind of manipulate it so it doesn't run into your head. This is one of those levels on your first playthrough. It's it's kind of... It's an experience that you just have to get through. Um, people will leave the console on for like a week at a time because... You turn off your game, you boot it up, you're back in room one again, so... Yeah. When you finally beat this your first time, it's like... You're thanking the heavens. And it's like you'd beat a section, and then you just kind of be like, Oh, there's more, and it just it just seems to keep going. Here we have a very tough water section with these fast smashers. It's just a whole onslaught of fish trying to get you. Rudy's gonna to do uh, he's gonna do a little setup here so that he can just gently float down, or not. Uh oh, yeah, or not. 
This is fine. You can take your time. Now he's got a little friend there. All right. Oh. Yeah, so I was explaining to Spike earlier. It's like, uh, I'm not really the fastest guy. I like to do things pretty safely when I can. Uh, the world record holder goes through this part so fast. Yeah, this, this game is just so difficult that if you can do a few things here and there to make it more consistent, then it can be worth doing. I always thought this part was really intimidating, especially the little ladder part, the little staircase part. Yeah, you're just like slowly moving through it, just literal pixels away from dying. You can see the door there. That's what Rudy's doing. He's going up to the very top of the level, hitting the switch to open up that door, and then going back down. There we go. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. The platform you have to stand on is it's only out there for a split second. Door, please. Little double hit. Morsel is known for his blocks that you can hit twice on accident. Might recognize this boss. Four hits and he'll have this fish down. We'll be moving on. My favorite part in the entire game is coming up. It's right here. One of the most innovative, creative, fun sections. And it's tied with that piece of music, which I learned today. I guess this piece of music is called Satan, uh, which, uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But uh, it's just so catchy and fun. And I'll, I'll just shut up now. Yeah, and the section is really cool because he's controlling this snake that he's riding with his D-pad. And if it touches a wall, uh, you die. And also you need to keep refreshing it with these P-switches. And you'll notice that he's skipping some of them because we've actually routed a way to get through all these ghosts without needing every single one. There you go. This boss is not actually the Magic Koopa. This boss is the little nubs on the wall. Kill all four of them. You want to lure the magic chaos. bits to hit the yellow blocks, which will turn into shells that you can use. This is, yeah, this is a tough one. But that went pretty well. First try. Nice. Yeah, that was good. Hey, final section of this level. Dude, this one is bug house. This section is so wild. He's got these skulls spawning above and below him. Constantly, just throughout this entire section. So he's going to be doing the serpentine motion to avoid them. Uh, and it's a—it's uh, just a really. This is probably the most chaotic section in the game, I would say. Yeah, and by the time you get here, you're already like have gone through so much. <laughs> yeah, you're just exhausted. All right, so we hit the P switch. He needs to get up here quickly. All right, he's done with that. That's good. And he needs to watch these skulls. He needs to know when he can move up. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of hammers, a lot of things going on right up directly above him. So the yeah. setup for this is really important. Probably do a uh, donation. Yeah, why not? Awesome. I got him coming here. Let's take Mage Gage with a $10 donation. Our boy Rudy at GDQ. Now that's true gaming. Rudy out here showing everyone what Kaizo is all about. Go get him, no problem, gamer. Heck yeah. Thank you so much, Mage Gage. Furyful Fawful sent in $300. 
Shout outs to all of the Kaizo community, a whole bunch of talented gamers and creators who take on incredibly difficult games like this one and manage to clear them. And of course, thanks to Rudy and Zaplix for continuing a long-standing tradition of showcasing some of the greatest games from this genre on the GDQ stage. I've also got a $5 donation, a train ticket from Spicy Chickpea, $5 hype train. Let's push and get that Step Mania incentive. We are almost at $55,000 out of the 100,000 that we need for that, so please keep them coming. All right, here's the final boss of this section right here. Gotta watch out for that. It might look a little familiar. I got one more hit, I believe. And Ships Made Cities is behind us. A few more segments left in the game. Hype. Right, this, this is the restage. Yeah. Yeah, these are the refights, the Mega Man refights. So this is uh I guess it's nine stages. Because it's the it's uh eight little boo fights based around the first eight stages of the game, and then one bonus one that's kind of a throwback to Morsel's last hack. Uh Storks. Yeah. yeah. So you have to do all nine of these, just like uh I think it's like that in Mega Man. We have to do all nine of these in one go. Uh, so by the time you get to some of the later ones, there's a lot of pressure. This is probably the worst spot in the game that you could die. Just because it, it takes quite a while to get through all of these. Yeah. There's a strat a... to do it though. You kind of pick your most... Uh, you kind of do the, the ones you're most consistent at at the very end. Do the the trickier ones first. Try to get those out of the way. Right. Here are the bullies again. Our elephants. I didn't explain it earlier, but this net, you have to be holding something while traveling through the net or it will just straight up kill you. Um, so you got to be careful of not having the block poof away from you while you're over it. Hear the bombs make a return. He does not want them to hit the ground, or he's gonna lose his Wiggler friend, and then he's gonna lose his Mario too. Yeah, this part's cool because you gotta like decide whether to throw left or right. This one's not too bad. The last few are hopefully. Not going to give Rudy too much trouble. I hope I didn't mouth that. Have you ever heard of Commentator's Curse? Uh, no. Can you explain it to me? I can't actually at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be fine. I always love the little pattern that those make when they all shoot at the same time. Yeah, it's cool looking. All right. That's eight down. See, now there's suddenly uh, another tube in the top middle. Yeah, and whoa, it's the boss from Storks, except it takes way less hits. And we have one final segment left in the whole game. I hope you guys have enjoyed elephants and snakes and crocodiles, but we're not done yet. We have a dragon to slay. Oof, yeah, and this a very, is very, very cool boss here. Quite a yeah. boss fight here. Uh, a lot of these jumps are very stretched out. Uh, very, how you say... Uh, kind of uncomfortable to execute. Um, oh, still got it. Nice. Save. Yeah, you basically got to do fire flower. two whole platforming sections before you even get a chance at fighting the boss for real. And we're here. Yeah, this is the final showdown. 
got to hit the dragon in the face with the fireball a few times, and then it'll move on to the next phase. You see, movie, uh, Rudy is moving in a very particular pattern. Try to bait out those fireballs in a very specific way so that he'll have uh, a chance to jump on the platform. and Because you can only really shoot him in the head. Yeah, and that part can get out of hand very easily. Final Moving inputs are right there. Yeah, Controller it. goes down. Timer is stopping very soon. Not yet, though. And time. Elephants nice. and GG, snakes and dude, crocodiles job, at Awesome Games Done Quick. That is no ordinary game. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed. It was a wild ride, wasn't it? Oh, man. Uh, Nicely done, man. How did, how, what, what is, what did that, how did, I, it felt pretty uh, tough there in the middle. How do we do? Uh, final time that I have on it is a 38.52. Let's go, That's good, dude. dude. So good. Sub 40 at AGDQ. Hype. Um, thank you guys so much for having me. I'll just do some final words here before we exit on out of here. Uh, thank you guys so much. This has been an absolute dream of mine. I found Twitch through watching Games Done Quick back in 2016, I believe. And it's absolutely changed my life. Uh, I know that the world is getting darker and scarier and more dangerous every day, but I truly believe that the way to make things better is to choose kindness, choose positivity, and choose love. I love first and I ask questions later. This is not about me, it's about you guys. There's absolutely nothing special about me. What makes this whole experience special is you. Uh, so thank you guys for being excited about this. Thank you guys for having me. GDQ, shout outs to you guys. Shout outs to my couch, the Wild Grim, White Moth. I love you guys. Uh, this has been an absolute blessed moment. I'm so lucky. I hope you guys had fun. All right. This is the credits. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Morsel. Thank you, Morsel, for making this game. And thank you to all of the No Problem Gamers, the team that I belong to. Uh, we choose positivity. We choose uh, kindness. And uh, these are some of the best people I know. Thank you guys for having me. I am on my way out of here. I hope you guys continue to enjoy the epic runs today. I'm your boy, Rudy, and I will never stop being your boy. See you guys. I'm out. Bye. Thank you so much, Rudy. That was an amazing run. That was so, I love. I, I finally got to host a Kaizo, and that was incredible. Like, I wow. Uh, I I don't even know what to say. That was just Rudy. Absolutely well done. Thank you so much for sharing that with all of us. All right, the hype continues here at Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online. Uh, I have so many donations to catch up on. So, I want to get in at least one more here that we had for that last run. We had Penguin Farm with a $250 donation. Super Mario World was the first video game I ever played. 30 years later, games like Elephants give me a challenging way to enjoy it in a whole new, sometimes painful way. And with the fun and, uh, with the fun and welcoming Super Mario World community that I'm proud to be a part of. Okay, now we have some more exciting games coming up here. I'm getting hyped, so let me get, uh, hold on one second here. Just type this into the uh, overlay here and push that button. All right, the hype continues, friends, as we get ready for this upcoming Final Fantasy XIV Palace of the Dead Floor, 171 to 180, solo mechanist run. I cannot wait. And neither can you, apparently. We have been getting so many amazing donations for the character race incentive. Now, that incentive did just close. Um, so if you did not get in for that, I'm sorry you missed your chance, but we are also still trying to meet the incentive 
for Step Mania, the bonus game we do. Well, I just moved up as I watched it here. We're now at $57,000 out of the $100,000 that we need to get that added to the schedule. So keep those donations coming. I'm going to switch a little bit back and forth here. I'm going to do some Final Fantasy 14 donations. I'm going to do some Step Mania donations. Uh, we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this moving, but I've got a lot of them coming up here. Necklace one sent in $25 looking forward to the upcoming 14 run. It's a tremendous game where I've met amazing friends. Is there still time for a uh, rogue Aiden to make a comeback? Uh, neck. I love you, brother. I don't, um, well, anyway, let's just kind of move on from that one. I've got a $50 donation here from Sophie. It wouldn't be GDQ without Step Mania. Let's get this challenge. Yes, please. Oh, I didn't try to, I, I didn't practice this name first. Sethalis sent in a $25 donation. How about donations hyping your favorite job in Final Fantasy XIV? Mine is Paladin. Also helping do my part in keeping the Popato Menace from winning the incentive. Thank you for that donation. As a fellow tank main and on behalf of all tanks everywhere, uh, to everyone who isn't a tank main, you're welcome. Stolen Cutlery sent in $25. Let's get that Step Mania incentive. $5 hype train times five. It is flying here. It is moving. It is going. We are about, we're about to hit 58,000 on that already. Please keep those donations coming. Arctic Light sent in $250. Can't wait to finally see Final Fantasy 14 at GDQ. I know it's going to be so good. I'm so excited. Oh, God, I can't wait. And, oh, God, Tank Buster. I'm dead. Uh, anybody got a res, please? Kirk Mack sent in $10. What does Simon Belmont call his series of dance aerobics routines? Stepvania. Eh, eh, eh. I, I like that one. I approve. Thank you for the puns. TSG James R sent in $5. Sending my best from the Ether Data Center and Sargenta's Sar Sargatanis server. I never actually tried to say that out loud. In Final Fantasy XIV, putting my five bucks towards Vieira for Angelus's run. Keep at it, y'all, and nerf cancer. We also had $10 donation from Zerla. Much love from the Step Mania slash In the Groove community. Let's get the incentive met. Price sent in $100. It's the year of the rabbit. Therefore, Vieira cannot fail this day. I mean, I, the logic is all there. I can't argue with that. Hey, look, a taco sent in $50. A step mania haiku. Feet moving feet quickly. As hidden arrows fly fast, one small donation. Thank you for that. Hey, look at Taco. Uh, every donation counts. There are no small donations. They are all good donations. And thank you, everyone who is working to make this happen. Goose sent in $100. Go Team Vieira. <laughs> you must be at least this tall to enter Palace of the Dead. Oh, shots fired. And $100 in from Keeves. Step it up, everyone. Used to play Step Mania a decade ago. Excited to see how far it's come. I'm excited for it, too. But first, we have a word from some friends of ours. Everybody, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with you after these. Hi everyone, my name is Pearl. I'm here to show you some quick speedrunning tips and tricks for Tribes of Midgard. This game is really easy to start speedrunning, so let's begin. Ah, 29.55, got him. First up, we have the Werewolf Skip. 
This trick is great for beginners since all you have to do is run to the corner and then back the way you came. For this skip, there are audio and visual cues, but they're traps, so you need complete confidence in the trick because if you hesitate, this will happen. Next, we have the Witch Quick Kill. You and your party can stack tripwires to quickly do a ton of damage and kill the witch before it gets a chance to retaliate. With a trusting, coordinated team, you can accomplish all kinds of things. Like this. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. See, I told you guys, 24 HP. You just gotta believe in me, okay? Oh. Uh, what? Dude, I'm fighting like a, like 15 of these. <laughs> wow. If a Viking themed co op speedrun interests you, come join our community named This Is The One on Discord to find your own team and start running. There is an invite to our Discord on the Tribes of Midgard section of speedrun.com. Humble Bundle is raising money for the Prevent Cancer Foundation in January. Check out their January Choice membership, including Doom Eternal and Tribes of Midgard, at HumbleBundle.com.
Welcome back, everyone. This is Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 Online. I'm Mr. Gaming. Oh, God, it cleaves! It cleaves! Uh, okay. This is fine. Um, well, the good news is we have a prize segment, and I think sent still mains red mage. So, boss man, if you're over there, um, I could use one of those reses if you got a minute. Uh, help. You, you understand that I'm not, like, made of mana, right? Lucid Dreaming does have a 60-second cooldown. I'll, I'll, I'll get him in 30 seconds of melee comboing. But first, everyone, hello. Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023. My name is Sent. I'm joined here by Court. Everyone in the studio is excited. Shouts oh. excited. We are all so excited <laughs> for Final Fantasy XIV, Palace of the Dead. Been excited for this for months. Can't wait to see Angelus conquer probably the hardest 10 floors in the entirety of that 200-floor dungeon solo. It's going to be incredible. But first, everyone... Final Fantasy XIV is actually the start of a new prize block. So we have a whole host of new prizes for you all that you could win if you donate. $25 is going to get you into everything we're about to talk about. If you haven't gotten $50 in today, you absolutely should. And I mean, let's just get started. There's so many cool things to talk about here. Yeah, absolutely. We got some Mario-related prizes for the All-Star Shuffler that's coming up later with Skybills. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited for that. Like, I, I can you know, maybe sometimes do like SMB3 or SMW. <laughs> I'm not sure I could manage doing yeah. all four Mario games randomly as they just feel like happening. It is going to be, it's going to be so much fun. And here we have the princess lightwick candle from our friends at Retro Flame. And as you would guess, it smells like peach. It's absolutely delightful. $5 minimum donation for this candle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our friends at Retro Flame. That's super cool. And from our friend over at Cute Monster Props, we have a lovely Mario themed coin, particularly themed after Mario 64. Mm -hmm. Absolutely shiny. You can see a lovely close-up of it there down on our insert. $5 minimum donation by itself. Make sure to get those donations in. But let's talk about what I really want to talk about, Court. We have an absolutely ridiculous number of Final Fantasy themed prizes to talk about, and they are all so incredible. They're fantastic. I mean, with Final Fantasy VII earlier on in the marathon, you all came out with just some incredible prizes and this is no different. You know, first I want to talk about this Chocobo hatchling frame print we got here. Quit! It's Quit! It's adorable. It's an adorable minion. It's an adorable rendition of it. It's a print that you could have at home for a $10 minimum donation. Thank you so much to SciCat Aurora Thank for you. sending that out to us. We have a whole host of different charms to talk about here from our friend Vats of Goop. We've got one of the Crystal XR cord, if you wouldn't mind Absolutely. holding that up, uh, with the Crystal Tower under him, and it's kind of rever a reversible charm in that nature. Oh. Uh, no, other fl flip it. Uh, nope. Like oh, like that. There you go. Oh. Yeah. So it's it's the crystal X art on like one side and the crystal tower oh. on the other. It's absolutely fantastic. That. Ten dollar minimum donation from Vats of Goop, and from our good friend Chowbu, we have two <gasps> sets of absolutely adorable uh, charms here in kind of a pastel style. Uh, we have these lovely Final Fantasy minions. Oops. They're so cute. Otter, Otter Otter's a little shy right now. That's fine. You know, we have all of the classics here. You've got the Bluebird. You've got the Little Behemoth. You've got the Chocobo Chick. You've got Fat Cat. Probably going to be the favorite. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's all about Otter Otter right so over here. So precious. Fat Cat, adorable. But I'm going to tell you all, Fat Cat has killed before. Fat Cat will kill again. Mark my words. I'm telling you this. I'm, I, I, I'm going to believe you. I mean, I got to stay away from that one. $15 minimum donation for those charms, as well as for this <gasps> lovely set of charms here. We have all four of your carbuncle options from the summoner job so class. As a summoner, you can choose to reskin your carbuncle as either an emerald, a topaz, or a ruby carbuncle, or stick with the original. Uh, or as I like to put it, the correct choice, wrong, wrong, and wrong, uh, other summoners, please don't at me. That's all I'm saying. $15 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Chowbu for sending that out to us. Now, here on the couch right next yes. to us, 
Our uh, our good friend Prizing Way here in spirit with us seems to have found an absolutely lovely 3D printed Crusaders blade from Cult of the Lamb. We saw the Cult of the Lamb run a little bit earlier. That was super cool. You can take home this 3D printed blade from it for a fifteen dollar minimum donation. But again, twenty five dollars going to get you entered into everything we are about to talk about, and you definitely want to do that. So much. Uh, love for sending that out to us. We have we have more stuff to talk about. Court. We got we so have, much more stuff. We have so much stuff to talk about, and uh, this is definitely one of the prizes I've been yep. so excited about. You got the Katana Zero Final soundtrack. This is one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. We were actually listening to it earlier on in the studio, raving about it. Fan Gary and ASCII Soft, thank you so much for sending this out to us. Twenty dollars minimum donation for one of my favorite indie game soundtracks we, on vinyl. We, we've got the task coming up later tonight. Oh. And one of the best parts about the task is uh, because it's so smooth and so clean, you basically just get to listen to the soundtrack <sighs> in each stage for like a minute. It's great. This game is incredible. If you haven't played Katana Zero, Please. you absolutely should. The soundtrack, 100% worth it. Seen it on vinyl, always super cool. $20 minimum donation Stunning. by itself, but again, $25 gets you into everything. We From Miss Select, we have a lovely Ponita crochet, just a handmade crochet of Ponita with an absolutely fantastic mane. I'm feeling that. That is very fiery. I love how it is so like, it's so up there. It's, it's, it has, it's making a statement. It is indeed absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Miss Select, for sending that out to us. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to the evolution inside the Screaming Die, uh, <laughs> all of them, because from a wonderful anonymous donator, we have a set of evolution dice, uh, you know, a D6 to a D20, every die you're going to need. You have uh, the full set, and each of them has a different EV. Uh, like figurine mm -hmm. inside of it uh, and it's balanced to still roll as a functional die which is just super cool like this is an amazing idea for a die set I can't believe I've never seen anyone do something similar before and I love it $25 yes. minimum donation make sure to get that in and uh, I think we have it we have our... it we had it in the studio here uh, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll find it soon we have this gorgeous Mewtwo engraved crystal Pokeball it comes with its own stand you know with the on button turn on and Mewtwo to is inside it, uh, given to us by Iggy Zig, one of our hosts we heard earlier uh, on the mic today. Iggy, Iggy is always so wonderful on the mic and always so wonderful when it comes to sourcing amazing prizes. Yes. Yeah, it's a crystal Pokeball with a Mewtwo encapsulated inside. We'll have to bring it out for you a little bit later, but for now, head over to GameStoneQuick.com, check out a picture yeah. because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, from another incredible oh anonymous donor, we have quite the collection for you. <laughs> it's, it's a bit thick here of cave soundtracks still sealed in their packaging. Uh, we've got some for you. Yeah, sure. We, we've got just a, a whole whole bunch. We've got the Don Pach Black Label. We've got Pink Sweets. We've got Ketsui. Uh, we've got Mushihime Sama Futari. These are all great games, great cave yeah. shmups, great soundtracks. And a lot of these, really hard to get a hold of. You, you basically had to go to like Kamaket 62, you know, in Japan, the year it happened, go to the cave booth and hope <laughs> they still had one actually printed for you. This is an incredible collection wow. of soundtracks. Could be yours all for a $25 minimum donation. And don't forget about our incredible $50 day prizes. We've got some great ones from our friend Sky Berkson, who does mind-boggling work. We have an incredible miniature of Timber Plaza from Diddy Kong Racing. Uh, we brought it out earlier to show off. Yeah. It's, it's so fantastic. Again, that, that entire miniature, aside from uh, the water and the rainbow, um, is made of paper. Yes. It's, a, it's amazing. And there even has like little tiny miniatures of the, the cart, the water boat, and the plane, the three different types of levels in Diddy Kong. Like the more you look at it, you're just like, wow, the level of detail put into this. There's so many. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's even a tiny frog in there yeah. that has drumsticks like headband on it as even... just like a little <laughs> Easter egg for DKC lovers. It's so cool. Thank you so much, Sky. I cannot believe the precision and craft that has gone into that. It is incredible. And of course, from our friends over at Final Fantasy XIV, we have a collector's edition of Endwalker, the current oh. Final Fantasy XIV expansion. You can't order this anymore. It comes with so much cool stuff. It comes with a print set detailing Ardbert, the Warrior of Light's journey from A Realm Reborn all the way here to Endwalker. And they are just fantastic memories. Uh, it comes with 
Das ist absolut adorable Lopret Keychain Friend. Lopret Beast Tribe in a few weeks. I am so excited. I hope we get them as like vendor retainers to put in our houses. That's going to be great. Um, you get the pin of Azim as well as uh, right here we have on the oh table in front of us if we can pan down for it. Probably easier than picking it up. Uh, we have an incredible statue of Ardbert as a paladin performing Passage of Arms with the shield out and the wings kind of unfolding behind him. It is an absolutely incredible oh. little statuette you get here, all for a $50 minimum donation. Huge shout-outs to our friends over at Final Fantasy XIV for sending it out. And, of course, don't forget our grand prizes. We have three yes. incredible grand prizes, all available for a $200 cumulative donation. So get those donations in. You're going to be also be entered in to win a Fallout 8 ER9 laser rifle from our friends over at Cute Monster Props. You're going to be entered to win a Skytech Gaming Azure gaming PC from our friends over at Skytech Gaming. And of course, you're going to be entered to win an incredible heroic replica as Hylian Shield and your choice of one of 15 absolutely incredible replicas yes. from David Heroic Replicas to go alongside it. Now... When you're getting those donations in, remember to get them in and put them towards the Step Mania bonus. To, yes. we're, we're so close. We're, oh we're only like $26,000, $27,000 off of making that happen. So it you keeps want going to see it. up and every time, once we hit that, I know there's more. Oh, oh yeah. We've there, got tons of bonuses look, we are look, excited I'm, to show you. I'm going to let you in on a little secret at home, everyone. Anytime we have a rhythm game in the marathon, you can bet we've got some kind of cool challenge bonus incentive for oh. that game hidden behind it. Just wait until we get it unlocked. It's going to be incredible. Remember to put your donations towards yes. it. Uh, you know, I got to say, everyone, I was a little disappointed that the Lalafells lost the bid war as a Lala myself. I have not seen the Lala community come together since the days of mock when we drove the other races away. But now we must all come together as citizens of Eorzea to get these donations in to make a step mania happen. Final Fantasy XIV is a run I've been looking forward to so much. It is it has been a second yes. home for me between GDQ events. I cannot express how much this game has meant to me and I cannot express how much I excited I am to see this run happen. I'm trembling with anticipation. Mr. Game and Shout, I know you're just as excited as I am. Take it away. Thank you, Sent. Thank you, Court. Great to be seeing both of you up there on the prize segments. Can't wait to be back with you. Uh, still, still need that res, though. Just, all right, we'll get to it. Uh, while I'm waiting on that, let's do a couple of more donations here. Uh, oh, Kerswiss sent in $100. Lolly Ho! Another tank main here donating on behalf of all the other warriors out there. Heart. Thank you, tanks. Uh, we've got a special message and donation. Uh, $75 here from the Mother Crystal. Hear. Feel. Think. About donating to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. My warriors of light, we must reach that step mania incentive. Uh, and an update on that. Holy cow, we are just past 75000 almost at $76,000 out of that 100000 that we need. So, to all of my children with donations abundant, please keep them coming. I want to see that Step Mania added. All right. I'm not going to hold us up any longer. It looks like we are getting ready to go. Uh, did you know that? Palace of the Dead had floors 171 to 180 because I don't think I ever got past about floor 37. So this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. Angelus, please take it away, my friend. The stage is yours. <laughs> 